Hey guys, what's going on? It's King Crystal here, and today I'm bringing you an $850 Ryzen 5 3600 and Navi RX 500 PC build guide. This PC would be great for 1440p 60fps gaming or 1080p 144Hz, and should also perform very well for the price and multi-threaded workloads. I do want to let everybody know that I don't have my normal mic at the moment, so if the audio quality is awful, I apologize and you know why. Without much else to say, let's get into the build guide. For the processor, I obviously chose the $199 Ryzen 5 3600. This is a hectacore CPU with simultaneous multi-threading, with a base clock of 3.6GHz and a boost of 4.2GHz. Compared to last generation, it does have a much higher L3 cache of 32MB and 3MB of L2 cache, as well as including 40 PCIe 4.0 lanes. The star of the show, however, would be the new Zen 2 architecture, which is built on the 7 nanometer process. This allows for better IPC, leading to much higher single core performance, and allows Ryzen to be on par, if not ahead of Intel's current CPUs. For the CPU cooler, I chose the $34 Cooler Master Hyper 212 Black Edition. It's a slick looking all black tower air cooler and provides a decent upgrade from the stock Wraith Stealth Cooler. It'll be plenty to cool the 3600 with its TDP of just 65 watts. For the motherboard, I chose the $75 ASRock B450M Pro 4. This motherboard is compatible with the Ryzen 5 3600, and I have seen that testing has been done to assure that it performs properly, however a BIOS update will most likely be necessary. For this you will either need a Ryzen 1st generation or 2nd generation CPU, or you can order a free BIOS kit from AMD on their website after purchasing your Ryzen 3rd gen CPU. So needless to say, this is kind of a hassle, I know, but at the end of the day, you're still going to have a working build, so you just gotta bear with it. For memory, I chose the $70 Team Vulcan Z kit. This kit includes two 8GB sticks for a total of 16GB running at 3000MHz. I don't recommend any lower than 3000MHz with Ryzen, as the Infinity fabric benefits from the higher speeds. The timings of this kit are 16, 18, 18, 38, and I haven't ever seen issues with getting team memory to its rated speeds with Ryzen. For storage, I chose the $60 Crucial MX500 SSD. This is a 500GB TLC drive by Crucial, and offers DRAM as its memory type. Crucial also has always been known for its reliable drives, and the SSD should easily outperform any standard hard drive in loading up applications or booting up the OS. For the graphics card, I chose the $350 RX 5700 by XFX. This card is a great 1440p card, performing similar to the RTX 2060 Super Edition while only costing as much as the normal RTX 2060. The only thing I will say is that it does come with a single blower style cooler, so if you are one of those who prefer to have an aftermarket cooler on your card for better temperatures, feel free to just wait a month or so and I'm sure the aftermarket cards will be released soon. For the case, I chose the $54 Cooler Master NR400. This is a minimalistic micro ATX case, which provides features such as a seamless tempered glass side panel, great airflow due to the front mesh panel, a power supply shroud, and an optical drive bay for all you old school people out there. Finally, for the power supply, I went with the $68 Corsair CX650 watt. This is an 80 plus bronze Nod Mongeobler power supply, first manufactured in 2017. It also has all the protections you need in a power supply for a good reliability, so your system doesn't, you know, explode, because that's a good thing. So that was my $850 Ryzen 5 3600 build guide. I hope you all enjoyed, and if you have any questions, leave them down in the comments below. You can also join Crystal Cord, the official King Crystal Tech Discord, which will be linked in the description down below. Without further ado, this is King Crystal signing off, and peace out.